What's up gamers? I am Kaizoku with Kaizoku Gaming and today I am beyond excited to announce that I'll be giving away this Logitech G Pro wireless gaming mouse. Um, the giveaway will last until January 26th and I really like this mouse because it's the one that I use. So I thought wouldn't it be a cool idea to give this away to a really amazing viewer as a thank you for being here with me when I started this channel. So make sure you check the description uh, in the video so that I can have the opportunity to give one of you guys this mouse. Uh, thank you guys so much. So with all that said, let's go ahead and talk about today's video. After grinding a bit of support games lately, I've kind of come to realize that Zenyatta can be a surprisingly really strong pick right now. I wanted to go over a few notes that I think a lot of people can take advantage of to win games. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into the video to see why I think that Zen is a really good pick right now. Oh man. Get Popping off the silver. All right, guys. So as you can see, I've had more than my fill of enjoyment playing Zen these past few days. I won't lie. The biggest reason I made this video is because I think a lot of people are still a little disapproving of Zen in games, as I'm still seeing people not really want the hero in very many comps. However, I've tried playing him regardless of that, and I've had a roughly 80% win rate in all the games that I played with him. So. I guess what I'm trying to explain is how I really don't think he's a throw pick anymore. I mean, let's be honest, he did used to kind of be a throw pick most of the time before this patch hit. But not anymore. He's in a really strong place right now with the shield nerfs and, you know, you can get your discord orbs on targets a lot more reliably now. Shields break faster. You know, you get a discord orb onto their main tank and a healing orb onto your main tank and there you go. Typically the odds are in your favor starting that team fight. Um, Maximizing your uptimes with your Discord Orbs and Harmony Orbs will help you get more value out of this hero. Uh, the more times during a match that you have your Discords on enemies, then the more damage they take, and then the more likelihood that your team capitalizes upon that. So, uh, which leads me to kind of to another good point, calling good Discord targets. Now, we've all heard that Zen needs to help call Discorded targets, but if you're doing a good job maximizing your Discord uptimes, this will, this will kind of cause confusing and really cluttered comms. So what I mean by calling good targets is a brief initial call and then let your team do the rest. So don't flood your team's comms every time you switch Discord targets because not every target you Discord has a chance to die easily by your team. And let's be honest, that Hanzo on high ground behind their enemy team may very well be Discorded, but can your team really react to that in a timely manner? And the answer to that is no. So keep the Discord calling to a concise and appropriate call that your team can actually work with. Don't Really don't expect people to follow up on random Discord targets just because, you know, you were able to press your shift on an enemy. And another thing I wanted to talk about is transcendence usage. Don't be afraid to use your trance if you're about to die. I've made this mistake a bit too often where I'm 100% focused on countering like a Genji blade or an enemy ultimate that I don't actually take the time to save myself to be able to, you know, be with my team when we take a fight. And what ends up happening is that I die and the enemy team wins a 5v6 anyway. So if it ever comes down to it, make sure you're saving yourself to prevent this from happening and um, so that you don't have to make that long walk back from spawn to your team. Ideally, if we're positioned good enough or we're getting proficient with winning duels, then we really don't have to ult. But like I said, if it does come down to it, you're better off to be alive with your team than dead. Now, as much as I like Zen, it is important that during most all these clips, you see that I'm trying not to be too far up because when you play Zen, it is really critical that your positioning isn't too far forward. That way, you have time to start rotating or backing up if you see the enemy team pushing your team. And to add to that, playing sight lines and the edges of walls and corners really helps prevent you from taking damage while helping your team with right click volleys downrange. The idea behind long distance right click volleys is you want to place your crosshair in a position where an enemy might be trying to position themselves at. Now, of course, they might not always be where you predict them to be, but if you if you if if they are, then you've got them. Honestly, Zen isn't really a reaction-based hero anyway, so, and on top of him being a projectile-based, his whole kit is almost prediction-based, meaning you are aware of what potentially could happen, so you really want to play, play proactively instead of reactively. And so, for example, that ha that spot where Hanzo or Widow likes to sit typically, don't be afraid to take a chance and go ahead and charge up that volley just in case they're there. The worst case, you miss a volley. But you'd be surprised if you take more chances how much more often you might just see yourself getting some highlight-worthy, long-distance, juicy right-click eliminations. 
The next thing I'd like to hit on is positivity. Uh, as cheesy as it might sound, we could really take note of some of Zen's voice lines he says in the game. In this game, you see we were down 0-1 to on King of the Hill, which can be a little discouraging for your team, especially if you're not playing with friends or it's just random strangers in comp. Unfortunately, people tend to be a little more toxic towards random people on the internet versus people you know, so make sure that if you have a bad start to a round, it doesn't always mean losing the game. Stay positive and let your team know that we still have some opportunities to win this game. I can't tell you how many games of Overwatch are lost because of a team that gets discouraged after one fight and then loses their hope. It's a bit cliche, but I'm telling you, it happens so much. I've won a lot of games that I otherwise would not have because I was able to bite my lip, stay positive with the team, and just focus on the game and not the drama. If you've ever watched a GM player do an unranked GM grind, you'll know exactly what I'm getting at here. If they have toxic players in their games, they typically just muscle on and ignore them, or they stay just stay positive. So work on that, and you will be surprised at the games that you will salvage wins out of that otherwise would have been losses due to yourself getting tilted so don't let that happen and lastly i hope everybody enjoyed today's video i really enjoyed playing zen in these games and after getting a taste of playing him after so long really miss playing the hero in general if he's played appropriately he can really be a great help to your team so with all that said if you are getting farmed or having a particularly difficult time against an enemy like doomfist Genji tracer or a dive comp um, you do want to consider swapping because at the end of the day, he still does lack mobility compared to the other supports in the roster. So um, thank you guys. Take care and go be positive and win some games.